I'm going to teach you how to edit a YouTube video using CapCut's desktop video editing application, both in terms of the mechanics of editing, what buttons to press and all that kind of stuff, but also in terms of how to think like an editor. We'll look at the various scenarios you might find yourself in editing a YouTube video, be it a talking head shot like this, or some B-roll shots, or some product shots. And we'll show you how to use CapCut's various AI tools to make your end result not only better, but also far quicker to achieve. Trust me, when you've spent as much time as myself and Alina in front of the computer editing videos, anything that makes the job faster is a good thing. The majority of CapCut's functionality is free, although throughout this video you will see some effects that have a little pro symbol next to them. You can get access to some of the more advanced functionality for a monthly fee. There's more information in the description below. Now, this is going to be intense. You may have to rewind sections, watch them twice, but by the end of this, trust me, you are going to be able to edit any YouTube video. I know, I know, you want to get into the fun stuff, but bear with me a second, this is important. In the early days, you might just have a couple of video clips, but later on, you could have 200, 300 video clips. Save yourself a lot of headache and organize those clips into a folder structure, in the case of a Mac, in Finder first. When you then import those folders, the folder structure is retained in the media browser of CapCut. Within CapCut's media browser, you can then create new folders to even better organize your footage. Here we have a montage of some of our better drone clips, but it's a single file with the clips running one after the other. It's from a different project. Now, if we wanted to break up that file and use the various component parts in a new project, we'd normally have to do that down on the timeline, make various cuts, and then drag the clips around. CapCut has a really nifty tool where you can right click on the clip, go to split scene, and look at that, the scene detection has made the cuts in the right place, given us 10 individual clips within their own folder, within the prearranged folder structure, ready to be used in any future projects. I know you're wanting to drag all your clips down into the timeline and start shuffling them around and start editing, but trust me, this is editing. This is how professionals do it. Now, within CapCut, we have a smart search feature. If you click on that little search dialog box, not only do we get facial recognition of the people within all those clips, but you can type in things to identify within your footage. Three clips with mountains, and it's not just showing you the whole clip, it's showing you the piece of the clip that features the mountain. Same if we type in car, there's Alina pulling some funny faces, and river, there you go. As you can see, within a bigger piece of work, it's found the segment that features a river. We're ready to edit our YouTube video. So within the studio talking head folder, we have a one hour clip of me talking to the camera. Now that's 50 minutes of gibberish and 10 minutes of good stuff. How do we get rid of the bad stuff? Well, we drag the clip down onto the timeline, we play through it, we make the cuts where required and delete all the bad stuff. That's the way to do it. Very time consuming. If only there was a better way of doing it. Wait till you see this. With the clip selected, hit the remove filler words button. Give the software time to analyze the clip and look at that, an itemization of all the pauses, repeats, and filler words within that one hour clip. I've never seen anything like it. If we look at all the pauses, for example, we can straight away select all of them and delete them. If you do want to inspect something, you can click on it and it will take you to the right point in the timeline. Can you imagine how much time this saves when you're editing these long talking head videos like we do here. On a few occasions, we've been asked to add subtitles to our nine hour drone cinematography masterclass for those people who are not native English speakers. The subtitles would help understand what we're saying, but neither of us have had time to transcribe a nine hour video. With auto captions, however, everything is done for you. With the clip selected, go up to the text browser, you will see auto captions and hit create. Give CapCut time to work its magic and look at that, a full set of captions above your video. CapCut being CapCut, you have endless ways of customizing the look of your subtitles. It might be appropriate for you to have them come up on screen in a single line, or you might want to animate the text. Either way, it's very, very simple to do. A nice function in the export settings is the ability to export your captions independently as an SRT or text file for independent upload to something like YouTube. With the 
the talking head side of things sorted, it's nice to drop some B-roll in to give your viewers some variety in the footage that they're watching. With the media browser set to list view, we can look at the longer clips and pull in the in and out points and do our editing there and then. A little scissors icon shows us that the clip has been edited and as and when we drop that clip onto our timeline, we get a little added icon. All of these little steps to keep our timeline clear helps us manage our workflow when we have hundreds of clips and keeps us focused on the creative process instead of the mechanics of shuffling around loads of different random clips. You can stack multiple layers of clips on the timeline here using the talking head as a foundation and then you can just drag around as you wish to get the outcome that you desire. Loads of YouTube channels employ some kind of green screen or cutout technique so you can superimpose yourself onto a different background. Couldn't be easier here in CapCut. Single press of the auto cutout button and the background is removed. You can then scale and reposition yourself as required. If you don't have your own background to work with, CapCut has loads of its own, many of which are animated. The only pro tip I would give you here, if you are using this auto cutout feature, is it's not always perfect, so pick a new background that somewhat matches the background you've just cut out, and this will help mask any imperfections. We can take things one step further with the chroma key. If you can set up some kind of blue or green backdrop behind you, you might be able to get some better quality results. With the clip selected and sat on top of your desired background, go up to Cutout Chroma Key Color Picker, pick the color that you're looking to remove, and then slide up the strength enough to remove that background and replace it with the new background. Scale and reposition, and oh dear, what are we going to do about those unwanted lights in the shot? Go to Mask and pick the shape that will best encapsulate what it is you want to retain in the shot, in this case a circle mask, make some adjustments and as you can see you are able to remove the unwanted parts of the top layer of that timeline. For a side by side comparison you can see that our somewhat professional blue screen setup is yielding better results than the auto cutout function. Within CapCut's library, we also have some really great green screen elements. Drag one down on top of your timeline, go to cut out, hit chroma key, color picker, select the green and slide the strength up just enough to remove that green. You can then scale and resize and there you go, a really nice transparent element on top of your underlying footage. The human enhancements are for me some of the standout features here in CapCut. Go up to Enhance, select Face, and you'll see the little markers tracking the head of the subject. The Even Slider is by far the best tool I've seen in video editing software. It evens out the skin tones, it doesn't smooth the skin as such, it just makes the skin tone more uniform, which is perfect if you've got blotchy skin, for example, or if there's some harsh lighting on a part of the face, which can create a hot spot, it also helps bring that down a bit. So we're not just trying to fake the way we look here, we can use these tools to enhance the cinematography of a shot that may have been taken in an uncontrolled environment. As long as you don't overcook it, the smooth slider can work pretty well in terms of evening out the complexion, removing imperfections, just don't overdo it. It's not going to work well on a stubbly chin either, I can tell you that. The other one I particularly like is Brighten, because that has the effect of just targeting the face and the neck and adding a little bit of fill light. Now if you were doing that at the time in the shoot for example, we might have a little reflector or something bouncing some light into Stella's face here, but we didn't, so in post here we can add that and I just think that's fantastic. In facial beauty, we can modify the actual structure of our face. Now I'm not suggesting for a minute that our model needs that, nor that you need that, but just by way of demonstration, we can change the shape of the face and then frame by frame that alteration is held irrespective of the camera movement thanks to the subject recognition here in CapCut. Used on the right kind of clip, the digital makeup is quite remarkable. Here with Alina, we can give her some big eyelashes, you can adjust the strength of that if it's coming in a bit heavy, and since we can, let's give her some more dramatic eyeshadow.
as for the body adjustments, let's give me some wider shoulders. There we go, slim arms. No, I want massive arms. Right angle shoulder, yes. Let's get those shoulders even bigger. Let's get the head smaller. Look at that. Uh, breast enhancement. <laughs> Oh, look at that. Look at that. I've been to the gym. Absolutely massive. Look at it when we play it, though. It plays through perfectly. It's absolutely seamless. Oh, <laughs> this is good stuff. Right, I'll be back in a minute. I need to go work out. Here's a typical YouTube setup with a talking head of me on the primary timeline and some B-roll clips dropped down on top. The only problem is, not only are these clips not colour corrected or colour graded, but they don't match, they all look different. In this situation, what we've had to do for over 10 years is go through every single clip manually, colour correcting and colour grading them. Here inside CapCut we have a one-click auto-adjust colour correction tool and it works really well. Look at the before and after of me in this talking head. And now we can go through every single bit of B-roll to adjust the exposures to a normalised level. This clip in the trees is clearly underexposed, but the auto adjust brings things up to a good level. This really is a game changer in terms of video editing efficiency. I wish we had this when we were editing enormously long wedding videos back in the day. It would have saved a lot of time. Now, power users can get into the HSL color adjustments, curves adjustments, and color wheel adjustments if you wish, but I'd say 90% of you aren't going to even require that. Now you have this auto adjust function. Now we have a standardized baseline of color corrected clips. We can apply all manner of color grades to our footage. Up in the filters browser, we have an enormous number of looks or presets that change the colors of the footage. And I have to say, most of them are very, very good. You can apply the filters clip by clip. As you see here, we've applied Moody Fall to this very green shot. And I think it looks absolutely great if we add a little bit of orange kind of sepia tones into those saturated green colors. I love that. Alternatively, you can apply the filter across a whole range of clips, which should give you a good result if you have that standardized baseline of color corrected footage. This one really got me excited. Here we've imported a still screenshot from Google of the film Mad Max. We want to replicate those colors onto our own clip. So we select our own clip and you'll see there there's a color match option. Click that, go to source, search for the still frame of Mad Max and hit OK. Look at that before, after. It's done a pretty good job of matching those colors. Now, just to give you a little flavor of the power of the manual adjustments here, I think the blacks are a little bit crushed in our version. So we can go into the basic adjustments, scroll down to fade, move that slider up, and that's just gonna fade out those shadows a little bit, just wash them out a little bit. And I think that gives us a better match with the original source clip. CapCut has an absolutely outrageous number of effects, ranging from the more traditional discrete ones, shall we say, for a more traditional channel like this, all the way up to social media crazy madness for young, cool, TikToking, YouTubing youngsters, uh, I don't know, whatever you call these kids nowadays. Anyway, there's so many in here. What I would recommend is you spend a morning just kind of scrolling through them, previewing them, playing with them, and then you can hit a little star icon on the effects that you like, and you'll have a selection of favorites at the top, which is exactly what we've done here. We've got about 15 or so that we think will be of use to us. To give you an example of one that I think is truly high quality and classy, for want of a better word, here's a gimbal shot of Alina. We're rotating round her, but the shot's a little bit flat. The light was flat. So we have the sun effect. Let's drag that down onto the clip and you can see that it gives us those sun flares poking from behind her head. And actually, as we move round her, the sun kind of flashes almost as if her head is obstructing the flow of light from the sun and creating those flares. In the cartoon section, I found some great fun effects that I think are good for product showcases. So look at this remote control here. Wow, it's all in, it's colorful. I think it looks good. Then up comes the warning sign. Maybe there's an overheating issue. And I just threw in this neon effect one because I just loved the way it looked. By far some of my favorites are the effects that actually interact with the underlying clip to trace the outline of the subject matter. Great for product showcases, particularly for tech channels and such like. The situation with transitions is exactly the same as with effects. Absolutely loads of them. Pick one that you think looks good, drag it down onto the timeline. If there's adjustable parameters, you can make some changes. You need to exercise a little taste and judgment with transitions, but it depends entirely on the kind of content that you are creating. For some of you, wild, jazzy, flashy transitions will be perfect. For others, maybe something a little bit uh, more low-key is appropriate.
no matter how good your video quality is, if the audio is not good, no one's going to want to watch your video. So in that respect, audio quality is more important than video quality. At the time of capture, try and get your audio source close to a microphone, but sometimes that's not always possible or there's background noise. So the noise reduction function is a very nice way of trying to bring down often those lower rumbling tones of wind noise or road noise or something that's in the background. I'm standing in the bathroom with the shower running in the background. Let's see if the noise reduction can help sort out this background rumble. I'm standing in the bathroom with the shower running in the background. Let's see if the noise reduction can help sort out this background rumble. Now let's see if the vocal enhance tools can sort out this questionable audio. Now let's see if the vocal enhance tools can sort out this questionable audio. I think you've got the lay of the land by now, so you guessed it, with titles, absolutely millions of them. Go through them, select one that you like, drag it down on top of your footage, make the required changes, and hey presto, great looking title. Same goes for the so-called stickers, absolutely millions of emojis and pointers and all kinds of great fun stuff. Now, I particularly like the pointers to try and accent certain parts of the image if I'm talking about something in a video. One easy but high production value thing that you can do with your titles and stickers is motion track them to a moving part of your video. I want this arrow to point at the drone, but the drone's moving around so it doesn't really look very good. Go to tracking, motion tracking, adjust the selection box to fit the subject you want to track. Hit start, give the software some time to work its magic and bingo, the arrow is attached to the drone. It's in slightly the wrong place, so we'll make a position adjustment to exactly where we want it to be and fantastic a motion tracked sticker in your footage in the audio browser we have some music and sound effects there's a decent little library of royalty free music already included with cap cut very simple scroll through find something you like drag it down onto your timeline same goes with sound effects although the search box can be quite useful with the sound effects so here we've typed wind into the search box and it's come up with some wind noises that might be appropriate while i'm standing here in the middle of the scottish wilderness You've created your YouTube masterpiece, so we need to export and we also need to create a thumbnail. Let's start with the thumbnail. There's a great little function here. You can click on the icon down there, the so-called cover, and up it comes with a whole bunch of options. I've already selected a cover here, but we can reselect a cover. And as you can see, you can either import one from your hard drive, a photograph, for example, that you've deliberately taken for your thumbnail, or you can select a frame from your video. Let's take this nice headshot of Alina and here we have a whole bunch of preset thumbnails that you can select from, change to your requirements and within a matter of seconds or minutes, you've got a really nice thumbnail for your YouTube video. Now when you go up to file export, you'll be able to export the video according to the export settings you have chosen and you will also get that thumbnail that you have created. So there you go, folks. Now you have all the tools at your disposal to edit some great YouTube videos. We've not been able to talk about absolutely everything here. There's some serious power tools like adjustment layers, compound clips, advanced speed ramping. There's video upscaling in there. There's auto reframing. There's so much stuff that's going to keep you going. I think CapCut it perfectly balances the requirement to be user-friendly for beginner video editors, but also has the depth for more experienced people that really want some more advanced functionality. It's an impressive piece of software and perfect for editing YouTube videos. If you have any questions, do drop a comment below. We'll do our best to try and answer them and hopefully we'll see you in the next video.